Hello Grade 7s, I'm Helen and that means today is Natural Sciences. So are you ready for our lesson today? Remember we're exploring the periodic table and today we're going to focus on just the first 20 elements on the periodic table. Let's begin. Let's talk about the patterns we see on the periodic table. Do you remember that we said that the periodic table elements are organized into groups and into periods? Now remember, it's a table. And tables have columns and rows. So which of the groups? Are the groups columns? or other groups rows. Well, you should remember that your groups are in fact the columns. And if we go along the periodic table, we find that we have 18 groups. The periods, of course, are the rows. And we look at how many rows we have and there are seven rows showing on this version of the periodic table. So we know that our elements are classified into this table and we know that the patterns mean something. But we're going to also focus on atomic numbers of elements on the periodic table. So instead of seeing this whole periodic table, we're going to enlarge just part of the table so that we can see these atomic numbers very, very clearly. So we're going to focus on just this top part of our table. We're going to ignore the bottom part for the moment. So what do you notice about the atomic numbers of elements on the periodic table. And we're just focusing on the first 18. So let's see, what is that pattern? We start in period one, group one, with the very first element called hydrogen. And we see that its atomic number is one. If we grow, go across the period to the second element right across there in group 18 we see that the second element which is helium has an atomic number of two if we skip down to the next period or row we see that our third element in the periodic table which is called lithium has an atomic number of three beryllium has four Boron, five. So what do we see? What is that pattern? Every element that comes next along a row or a period increases the atomic number by one. So we can see there is definitely a pattern. We can go into the third period, 11, 12, 13, 14, and so on. So we can see that across a period or across the row of the periodic table, we see that we are increasing the atomic numbers by one every time. Now, do you remember from our previous lesson, what is this thing called an atomic number? Well, the atomic number, remember, equals the number of protons present in an atom of that element. So hydrogen has one proton, beryllium has four, boron has five, and so on, which means that across a row or a period, we see that our elements, an atom of our elements, are getting heavier and heavier and heavier because we're adding a proton each time. So we can see that it's not only, as we spoke about previously, that groups have similar ways of reacting and similar properties. We can see that as we go across the period, our atomic numbers get bigger and bigger. 
And this is quite useful if you have to learn the first 20 elements of the periodic table because you can associate a number now with an element and you can see that as we move along the number, the atomic number increases to the next element. Now that we understand that there is a pattern in terms of how the elements are arranged on the periodic table and that pattern is closely associated with the atomic number, let's see how good a chemist you are and how well you know what this periodic table is all about. So can you predict, which means make an educated guess, the atomic numbers for the next two elements? So we're looking at the first 18 elements and we can see that argon, which is the 18th element, the last element in the third period or row, we can see that it has an atomic number of 18. Now, if we were to go on to the next period, period four, underneath sodium, we're going to find the element potassium. And potassium has the symbol K. So potassium is element number one in period four. Tell me, what do you think its atomic number will be? I'm sure you can shout it out for me and let me hear it. Of course, the atomic number is going to be 18 plus 1 because you know that that is the pattern that we've established. We've established that there is a plus 1 pattern going on. So potassium is going to have plus 1 over argon. So our atomic number for potassium should be 19. I hope you got that one right. Without my help now, can you predict the atomic number for the next element, which would lie underneath magnesium and next to potassium along the row? So it's going to now be second in period four. Can you predict its atomic number? Shout it out so that I can hear you. What is the atomic number of calcium? And of course, it's going to be 20 because our pattern is plus one as we go along a row. So how good were you? I'm sure you were really, really good at that. So now let's start becoming very familiar with these 20 elements, the first 20 elements. It's really not a good thing to try and sit down and learn them off by heart. The more you use them and the more you look at the periodic table, the easier it will become to learn the names and the symbols that go with them. So one way I like to use when I teach grade sevens is to play games. So we're going to play a game to help you become familiar with those 20 elements. You're going to read some clues and you're going to try and use the clues to discover the answer to a question. And the letters of the answer will be made up from your atomic symbols. So the symbols for the elements are going to give you the letters that make up your answer. Let's start with the first one. So our first challenge question is, this animal loves honey and sleeps in winter. So what is that animal? We've got two clues to help us with the answer. You may already think you know the answer. Let's now find out if you were correct. So our first clue reads, this element has half as many protons as oxygen. Now remember, how do we know how many protons a particular atom of a particular kind of element has? 
Well, the number of protons is going to be reflected in what the atomic number is. So we're looking here for atomic numbers to help us answer this or to help this clue give us some insight as to what our answer can be. So if we go to oxygen, and here was the there was the challenge, you had to know that oxygen had the symbol O. If we go to oxygen, we see the atomic number is eight, which means that oxygen has eight protons. Half as many protons as oxygen is eight divided by two, which equals four. So let's go back along the periodic table row and we get to four. Atomic number four is the element with the symbol BE and BE is beryllium. All right, say it with me, beryllium. But we can see that it has the symbol BE. So let's fill it in. We've got our first clue done. This element has double the protons, so we must multiply the number of protons by two found in fluorine. Now, if you have a look at our elements here, our 20 elements, where do you think we would find fluorine? Well, it's the only one in our 20 elements that has an F as an atomic symbol or an element symbol. So double nine is going to take us to 18. Nine times two is 18. So we are now being referred to the element called argon. And there we are. We have our answer. The animal loves honey and it sleeps in winter and it is a bear. Okay, got the idea? Let's try this one. What do we call a large number of fish swimming together? Is it a flock of fish? Is it a herd of fish? I don't think so. Let's try and work it out. A yellow element that smells like rotten eggs. Well, this element is sulfur, right? Sulfur is yellow. We're going to find out lots more about sulfur in future lessons. So we're going to start off our answer with S. This element has one proton. Let's go to our atomic number and we find that the second letter in our word is an H. We need to breathe this in to stay alive. Now you know you're going to breathe in a mixture of air. You're going to breathe in nitrogen. You're going to breathe in argon. But which of the gases that you breathe in do you need to stay alive? Well, of course, it's oxygen. So let's add that to our answer. This shiny element has an atomic number of 13. Let's go straight to 13 and we get a L. And a group of fish swimming together is called a shoal of fish. What's my dog's name? Try and work it out as we're going through this. The symbol for the element with the atomic number of six. So the first letter of my dog's name is C for carbon. The lightest element is H because it's got only one proton. This element has three times the protons of the first element we identified. Six times three is 18. We're back at argon. And this element is shiny, soft, and explodes in water. And that we remember from our last lesson is lithium. So my dog's name is Charlie. I'll see you again next time when we'll have some more fun with the periodic table. Remember that you don't have to sit down and learn these names and symbols off by heart. The best way, I think, for you to do it by yourself is to write down the names of the elements and on the back of the card, so you make a little card for yourself, you write carbon and on the back of it, you write the symbol C. And then you can play games with each other, with yourself, to try and remember these 20 elements. Learning is a lot more fun if you play games. 
I'll see you again next time from me, Helen. This is goodbye.